there is no question that there is constant discussion about a housing crash, a housing bubble, uh, often and most of the time about residential real estate. I want to flip the script. I want to take the notion of a 30% crash in asset values to the commercial market. And you know what? We'll even focus on multifamily commercial. And we have a, a wonderful member of the One Rental at a Time family, Jonathan Twomley, which this is where he plays. So we're going to ask him. Are there some cities, are there some locations that, that may see a 30% drop in values, let's say, over the next two years? What do you think, Jonathan? 30% well, crash? I Well, let me start yeah. off this answer without answering the question. Uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, He's so a lawyer, gonna, folks. He so, is no, no. a lawyer. Actually, no, I just, I just, no, actually, because I want to, I want to get about it a different way. Okay. No. So, uh, in the in the the crash of 2008 mm -hmm. of all of the different flavors of commercial property the one that did the best uh, hands down performed mm -hmm. the best during the recession was multifamily real estate there's no no debate question about it you can't argue that yep. it, it just did it it did the best of any flavor of multifamily of uh, sorry of commercial real estate and by that what I mean is that it only fell by 37%. <laughs> Woo! It only fell 37%. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, and it that made it the best performer of any flavor of commercial real estate. Um, yeah. Now, the other thing that helped, though, that's just on the value side and the value as we now are kind of, there's all yeah. kinds of factors that change it all the time. The, the thing that really made multifamily attractive is that, um, you know, you had renters continuing to pay their rent. Right. If, if it was cash flowing when you bought it, you didn't overpay for it. You know, maybe you had some softness. There were definitely some markets where uh, where vacancies spiked, you know, depending on what the local economy was like. But by and large, if you had good quality multifamily real estate, you bought it right. Uh, and you, you, you didn't you weren't like the last person who bought at the top of the market and overpaid and were expecting things. You know, your business plan was, well, it'll continue to go up. Um you were fine. You could ride it out and then you made money when things returned. Right. So, but it, it definitely, so can it crash that much? Absolutely. I want like that. So I don't want anybody out there. You will hear that people, just, just so I'm clear that 30% is a national average, right? The collective. Yes. Yes. Group. That was a that was nation, national. That was, wow. Yes, right. And other stuff, you know, was worse. Oh yeah. So again, um, and there were absolutely, you know, people will tell you there were no foreclosures in multifamily. Absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. I not bought true. several. I brought yeah. several. They were, yeah. I, I, bought, I bought several properties during that. It's weird. Uh, I don't know if you saw this in your area, but residential hit was hit first. Yeah. I was buying commercial, meaning apartments about two years, about a year and a half after I bought my last house. I bought, was starting to now, buy a part because again, the debt, it just unwinds slower. Right. This is what, so the reason for that, and we've talked about this before, and I still haven't answered your question yet, but I will. Uh, but the reason for that is because of the way the debt is structured, right? Exactly. Because, because you have to refinance on a set schedule and it's not like people who, you know, oh, my house is underwater, so I'm handing the keys back, which I think in a lot of cases was just dumb because people just should have held on and wrote it back up again, right? If they could afford the payment. But yeah. um, but the in commercial, you kind of come to a point where you're forced to make a decision, right? Like the, mm -hmm. the, you've got to refinance that debt. And yeah. if if your value has fallen such that you can't refinance yeah. the debt without adding additional capital to the property or to the, you know, without, you know, putting up additional money, then oftentimes what happens is people will sell. And if they can't sell, then they go into foreclosure. And I actually just saw somebody posting about this on LinkedIn yesterday about the fact that um, there are going to be a lot of people in the next year or two who are going to be in a situation where they're going to be like, you know what, I'm just not interested in putting up additional capital to refinance this asset, I'm going to sell it. And Absolutely. depending on how much of that happens at the same time, and it could potentially be a lot, right? Uh, because if you think about it, if most people are in five-year debt, it means 20% of the market is turning over every five every year. Correct. Right? And so if enough of that stuff comes on the market at the same time, 
and there's a, suddenly a whole lot of sellers, right? Well, we all know what happens then. Cra yeah, prices race could, to the could, bottom could crash. And so to answer your question, there are now several, one of the big conversations in the commercial space now, or in the multifamily space, uh, space I should say, is that there are certain cities where there has been a lot of construction and there's a lot of stuff coming out of the ground right now. And we're actually in a, there are more projects permitted right now than at any time since the 1970s, which was the last wow. big multi multifamily building boom. Now there's a and big, it's debate. very con isn't it very concentrated? Well, it's always concentrated, right? Oh, because it every okay. it's, and the reason for that is because everybody does the same analysis, right? And the 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 banks and the builders are all right. all doing the same. They're all talking, having the same conversation, and nobody's saying, "Oh, maybe we should do something different," right? So they're all saying, "Well, where's everybody moving?" Well, they're all moving to Texas. They're all moving to Florida, right? So, oh, therefore it's safe. So, okay, it, I'll give you a loan there because it's safe because everybody's moving there. Yeah. What happens? All the smart is, money's there. Well, maybe. All, yeah, so exactly. And everybody floods in there. And then what happens is, and that's why you have a, essentially a real estate cycle, right? Because you have you have this boom and bust where you have overbuilding and then you have a crash. So we're now in a situation where there's a lot of different things happening at the same time that could lead to a crash, at least in certain cities. And that is, you know, after years and years and years of construction lagging, it's now really ramped up, right? And multifamily has been the flavor of the month for a long enough time now that it's drawn all these all this money into it. So that's led to this big, massive building boom. The building boom has been concentrated in a few sort of hot places, right? Uh, and I'm talking about sort of proportionate to the market, right? Because mm -hmm. New York City, they're building a lot of units, but proportionately to the yeah, population- like Drop in the bucket, yeah. It, it's not, it's- just there's no overbuilding problem in New York City, even though there's a lot of units coming online, right? Um, but you've got places like Austin, Texas has now become one of the epicenters of potentially overbuilding. Yeah. Phoenix is one of them. Um, I think, uh, let's see, what else is on that map? There's like Boise, Idaho, I think is is mm -hmm. one that they've talked about. And uh, I'm sure that there are cities in, in Florida where the same you know, the same phenomenon is going on. So yeah. all of the kind of places that were hot, well, hot always leads to everybody rushing in and then you wind up with an overbuilding situation. So if you go and you look at like all, and then the other thing that's happening now, right, is you've got all these units coming online. We've also had a drop in demand for apartments. Exactly. Pretty much across the board. And retention is very high. People are not moving out, but the new people are not coming in. And so- with the normal sort of frictional, you know, what I call frictional vacancy, where you've just got like people take a job in another city, someone gets divorced, or they just, you know, they, for whatever reason, they just change apartments, you know, life situation changes, uh, uh, as opposed to they don't like the apartment, they want to move out, right? right? But just the normal life stuff that happens every day, you get a certain number of people who are moving out. Well, they're not being replaced at the same rate that they were. So we had, People buying, you know, for years, you know, you typically underwrite 5% vacancy, but for years, a lot of markets were up at like, you know, two, 3% vacancy. And I think a lot of people got sloppy and started underwriting to those levels kind of because they had to, to make the numbers work for deals. And now what you're seeing is, well, we're not in a, in a vacancy crisis, but vacancies have dropped back to kind of historical levels. And when you have the combination of people building on crazy expectations, occupancies going back to where they usually are, and and then and the potential you know recession. I mean, we're seeing, and then the debt thing happening at the same time, where you know interest rates have caused, uh, you know, cap rates to rise, which means valuations go down, which means when you refinance, you can't get as much proceeds, so you might need to put additional capital in at the same time that you've got rents, you know, rent softening and actually having some rent declines places, all this stuff can add up to some people not being able to get their refinance over the over the line and then trying to sell and not being able to sell and getting foreclosed on. And once that starts to happen, then you have 
like you said, the race to the bottom. So yeah. could there be a 30% crash? Well, uh, nobody's calling for that right now, but nobody was calling for it in 2008 either. Yeah. So could it get that bad? Potentially. Will it get that bad? I, I don't think so. But I, So possible, I would, not probable. Yeah, I but I would say 20% decline in values from the peak, I think is going to happen um, just because the peak prices were so outrageous. And, you know, but, but in some markets, it could be worse with this, this potential overbuilt situation. Now, the counter argument to this, I'll just give it. Sure. There, there, and I'll say there's, it's not clear cut. There really is a debate going on as to what's going to happen because people will say, well, yeah, more apartments are being built now that, than at any time since the 1970s. But then they'll say, yeah, but there's also 100 million more people in America than there were mm. in the 1970s, or maybe even more, right? The population yeah. has so proportionately, there are not as many apartments being built. That's yeah. that's one one argument, yeah. right? The other argument is that, you know, so there still is strong, uh, you know, occupancies are still very strong. The job market is still very strong. A lot of what's going on with people like not rent making new leases is like, well, they're just... They're, they're they're nervous because yeah, they're, they're hearing they're all the recession talk. Right. Yeah. But there's no there's no recession. It hasn't happened, right? And so, and jobs, you know, people are getting laid off, but they're getting reemployed right away. Yeah, so we're seeing that in tech a lot. I mean, people are people are not even filling out unemployment claims. They're they're getting yeah, rehired they're getting, somewhere else. Getting hired right away. So um everybody's still talking about can't find anyone to work, right? So yeah. um yeah, and, the, and the so, kind of the to kind of close out my thoughts on this 30%, I think it's going to happen. And and really, it's really a very simple thing is I saw a lot of dumb money, a lot of lazy money come to an asset that they think couldn't lose. And that always leads to, you know, reversion to the mean. So I, I think there's some pain coming. Um, 30%. And again, I think 30% in some cities, absolutely. I think a national 15, 20% is, is possible. Uh, if not probable, but yeah, I think 30% is coming to some cities probably without question. I, I just yeah, don't I, know which ones. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, you know, it's, it's more likely to happen where there's more overbuilding, right. Than, than um, places where it's harder to build like sure. for all, for all of like what, you know, people have been complaining about say San Francisco. Like, I don't think San Francisco is where you're going to see a crash. In, Ooh, in I did. Oh, prices. No, I uh, oh, I disagree. Uh, well, certainly. So let's talk about San Francisco. So first and foremost, there's already a crash happening in office. It's oh yeah, already well, offices. Happening. Yeah, for sure. Right, right. Yeah. Already happening in office everywhere. And yeah. yeah, near as I can tell, rents are down thirty percent in San Francisco for offices. Rents. No, no, that's residential. Rents. Still, really? Yes, yeah, still. There, San Francisco is going the wrong way. There will yeah. be somebody who makes a lot of money in San Francisco. Uh, unfortunately we are not at the bottom yet. It, it's, it's unsafe. I mean, I, I'm a diehard warrior fan who dropped 50 grand on a, on a PSA to buy season tickets and I can't go there anymore. I canceled, wow. I canceled it cause it's just unsafe. The, the half a mile walk from the train station to the chase center, you got to walk by drug, drug addicts and stuff on the ground. And Oh, by the way, you got to walk back, which is always 10 30 at night. It's, it's horrible there. It's, wow. it's San Francisco's a train wreck. It really is. So I'm, that's a shame. Cause I mean, in New York is like, just ba it's back. I mean, it's yes. like back. It's like back. I was the there a month ago, but yeah, yeah. New York is back. San Francisco is going the wrong way. Wow. Fast. fast. That is a shame. So, so I retract what I said about San Francisco, but you know, New York, like I'll just change it to New York. New York is not going to see a crash no. in, in apartment values. So Boston is not going to see a crash in apartment mm -hmm. values. Right. Cause those places are, you know, they're filled up. It's hard to build there. There's yeah. more demand than can be satisfied with building. They can't build enough. But in places where it's like super easy to build, and 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 it's been being built like crazy because there's so much open land, and you know those are the places that are going to have Agreed. The, yeah. the toughest time. So, yeah. well, Jonathan, if somebody wanted to interact with you and ask questions, you are always so gracious on Facebook. What is the Facebook group? It is Apartment Investors Club. So just look for it on Facebook. Fill out the questions and uh, you're in and you can join this conversation. And I really do welcome questions. So please go in there. Uh, you know, I was telling people yesterday, there is no such thing as a dumb question. I'm really happy to answer any questions yep. you've got. If you're think if you've got the question, somebody else has got the question and just, just go fire away. I mean, yeah. 
do uh, do yourself a favor. Join the group today. Let them know you came from one rental at a time. Uh, so he knows his weekly time with us is worthwhile and uh, start asking questions. Cause I think there's a lot of opportunity coming to commercial multifamily. I've said for a long time, residential is not structured to have the same pain it had last time, but multifamily, we repeated some of the same mistakes, short-term debt, variable rate debt, bad assumptions. Uh, so there's some opportunity coming. Jonathan, thank you so much. Absolutely.